my great pleasure to introduce uh, Stefan Lindeberg, um, who is going to give a talk, Food and Western Disease. Please welcome a warm round of applause, Stefan Lindeberg. Thank you so much. I'm delighted and uh, truly honored to stand uh, at this historic uh, event uh, among so many paleo enthusiasts uh, and follow two of the persons who are among those who have inspired me uh, the most. Uh, I read Boyd Eaton's paper in 1985 uh, and uh, I had a neighbor who was a vegetarian and she told me, well, we have the gut of vegetarians. Oh yeah, I said, and went to the library and then it's just been flying on its own wings uh, since then. And uh, Lauren Cordain, who has uh, well, helped me to understand so many of these details. Uh, and uh, one of the persons who uh, have uh, helped me to understand the importance of biologically active substances in foods, which at this point I think are more important than macro or micronutrients. Uh, so, uh, as you will see during my speech, uh, I am no proponent of a low-carb diet, uh, and I think um, uh, biologically active components of food are more important to understand why we have diseases that are absent in some populations. Uh, so, uh, essentially all what I say is in a book I published uh, last year, in Wiley Blackwell, Food and Western Disease. I have a home page, uh, also I'll show you in the end, stefanlindeberg.com. Uh, well, the base is uh, uh, just a few words about the basis of nutritional advice. Uh, unfortunately, stories are a big part of, of uh, what we or any person believes uh, is healthy food. Uh, and people like John Harvey Kellogg has had more influence on uh, thinking about healthy diet than uh, Darwin has, but uh, I see so many people here now, so I'm optimistic for the future. <clears throat> the story about low carb, uh, I will come back to it uh, uh, every now and then in my talk, uh, but essentially the idea that uh, postprandial, that is after a meal, postprandial increase in glucose is the cause of uh, Western disease. Uh, it's, uh, it's, well, you could call it a hypothesis uh, or a story. Sometimes it's hard to differ between the two, but, but it's certainly not been proven that it's the main cause. Then another question is, if you're glucose intolerant, then you cannot handle high loads of carbohydrate, but that's another issue. And of course, money, uh, I don't have to say anything about that, but it's obvious for anyone who goes into this uh, kind of business from a scientific or any other uh, point of view that uh, money has a huge impact uh, and has had. So, we have science also, and uh, at this point, epidemiology, observational studies, uh, have had more influence than uh, clinical trials. Of course, it's difficult to make clinical trials, to have two groups uh, who eat uh, what they think is the, exactly the same type of hamburger, and uh, one group eats uh, hamburger with real meat, and the other group with placebo meat, uh, and one group with, uh, uh, and vice versa for uh, the bread. Yeah, of course, it's impossible to do it uh, at this point. Maybe sometime in the future, but uh, for most uh, um, issues, it's, it's impossible to do a, a real good uh, study. So we need to include uh, evolutionary thinking uh, as uh, Boyd and uh, Lauren has shown so brilliantly. Uh, and for example, Many people feel that uh, it's, it's, it's good, they, they say it's natural. So sometimes when they use the word natural, uh, they mean it's evolutionary 
it, it, uh, it complies with evolutionary principles to, to breastfeed your baby instead of giving it to... Um, sorry, I'm a bit jet-lagged, so I don't find the words... Uh, uh, what do you call it? The, yeah. Uh, but sometimes natural can apply to what I call nature romanticism, uh, because sometimes it comes from nature, then it's good. So some women give uh, their babies uh, um, uh, 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 formula based on uh, soybeans. Uh, because they feel that uh, this is natural, it comes from nature, then they forget that uh, the, the soy plant wants to survive just like any other plant. And uh, maybe this is trivial stuff for you, but I'll say it anyway, that uh, the defense systems among plants uh, is a, a highly uh, underestimated health hazard uh, because the plant cannot run away, so it protects its... Uh, uh, children in another way by producing high amounts of uh, biologically active compounds uh, such as genistein and uh, dizein, uh, the phytoestrogens that are so highly praised because they come from nature. But uh, but uh, um, we should apply evolutionary principles on uh, our thinking. So I'm more afraid of um, of genistein. Uh, because it's deliberately directed towards uh, herbivores, while uh, DDE, the metabolite of DDT, uh, it just happens to be uh, uh, estrogenic. Uh, it could be a health hazard. Uh, from my understanding, it's not proven uh, as much as people think. But anyway, I'm more afraid of uh, deliberate uh, estrogens from nature than of uh, those who happen to be estrogenic. And this is uh, the natural uh, hormone, is estradiol. Okay, and closely attached to evolutionary medicine these days is uh, uh, observations among traditional populations with hopefully hunter-gatherer lifestyles, but sometimes you cannot find the populations with true hunter-gatherer lifestyles. And when we did the Kitava study, uh, these, these are the Kitavans, uh, a 50-year-old man to the left and his 87-year-old father. Uh, in 1990, um, uh, we chose that particular population because uh, they, they, have, they had enough uh, elderly people and they were a large enough community with uh, non-Western food habits. Uh, so we could not find... Uh, under the, the circumstances we had uh, available to, to study um, a hunter-gatherer population, but uh, that would have been the best thing. Uh, but anyway, when you study very diverse populations, uh, like the Eskimos, with a low-carb diet, uh, and you study uh, hunter-gatherers, sometimes with a high-carbohydrate diet from uh, root vegetables, uh, uh, the, the main thing is that they don't eat Western food. The 70% that uh, Lauren showed you uh, is absent for both of them. But uh, the uh, amount of carbohydrate or fat can be very, very different. Uh, and the ones we studied, uh, the Kitavans have a high carbohydrate intake. But uh, I would have been glad to study a low-carb population. So my issue is not that, uh, that uh, fat is bad. Uh, I think uh, it, it's not the main issue to understand why uh, they don't have Western disease. So we have the Trobrand Islands uh, north of Papua New Guinea, and we chose Kitava Island because the, that was uh, the, the part that had less, uh, had the, le the least influence of Western food habits. So 0.5 uh, uh, dollars per year, 50 cents per year, uh, on average, was spent on uh, importing food. So it's, it's negligible. And it's a lot of yam, sweet potato, taro, tapioca. Uh, there is some uh, other foods around. There's been a debate, at least in Sweden, uh, they say that uh, 
I did not see uh, the pigs because I did not want to see them. Well, <laughs> uh, please be more careful. Uh, uh, these people are in love with the low carb hypothesis, so so they they tend to uh, miscredit uh, me. Uh, but uh, pork's meat is eaten at occasions, but uh, it's almost negligible. Uh, the striking thing then is that uh, coronary heart disease, ischemic heart disease, uh, like myocardial infarction, is apparently totally absent, and they are very well aware of what happened uh, two or three generations ago. They, they were very keen to, to explain in detail, and they knew exactly from village to village the name of the persons who had this or that disease. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we can rely on it, and also we are helped by two physicians, uh, two German physicians who have worked there for years, uh, and they both state that they have not seen uh, uh, cardiovascular disease um, and this uh, complies with findings uh, in uh, many traditional populations uh, so our populations are not hunter-gatherers they are uh, if you like primitive haughty culturalists uh, they use uh, a wooden stick to dig and they, they um, uh, cultivate yam and other tubers uh, and uh, they cultivate fruit and they fish and uh, they get coconut uh, so they have just as much saturated fat as in Sweden for get it, uh, they get it from coconut. Uh, stroke is absent as well and you sometimes forget uh, stroke when you discuss cardiovascular disease uh, so the Japanese um, have had a lot of stroke uh, uh, and uh, some other low-risk populations have had just as much stroke as um, other. Uh, this is also consistent with findings, for example, in uh, East Africa. When the British came to Kenya and Uganda, uh, they found uh, from 1920s and, and uh, so on that uh, stroke was absent among the indigenous population. Um, and then uh, it became the most common neurologic disease uh, uh, parallel to a change in, in uh, society, changes in lifestyle and so forth. Uh, and now history repeats itself in Papua New Guinea. So uh, this 47-year-old man has um, hemiparesis and aphasia. He cannot speak, he cannot move half of his body. It happened uh, like this from one day to the, the other. And of course, when we asked uh, in Kitava about this, and uh, they knew that they had n never heard of um, sudden inability to speak or sudden um, paralysis uh, in, a, uh, in a conscious person, it tells us uh, something important. Uh, um, Many countries who have uh, what we consider a healthy lifestyle, Mediterranean countries, uh, for example, have a lot of stroke. So we should not forget stroke. When Japanese migrated to Hawaii, stroke decreased and myocardial infarction increased, and even more when they migrated further to the United States. We measured a lot of variables uh, related to uh, Western disease and uh, their levels are brilliant and this has been shown in so many uh, populations uh, so it's almost trivial. Uh, actually it's trivial to many uh, people who do not uh, accept the paleo concept uh, but they kind of, well, you know how defense mechanisms uh, work uh, and uh, if, if uh, there's a new way of thinking, uh, logic is uh, not always working. <laughs> so fasting serum glucose is two standard deviations lower in the red ketavans than in uh, the yellow uh, healthy Swedish population. And uh, about the same for uh, body mass index. If you have uh, a 50 year old uh, woman in Sweden, uh, on average 
uh, she would weigh 22 kilos less uh, if she had the same BMI as in Kitala, Trouble and Islands. Uh, unfortunately, the, the difference is even bigger because uh, she has more fat. I think uh, the concept of sarcopenia, uh, the concept that Boyd was talking about, that uh, you have too little mass, muscle mass is very important to uh, elaborate on. Uh, the, oh, sorry. The corresponding figure for uh, men is 19 kilos if they have the same BMI as Kitala. Blood pressure is low in uh, traditional populations, including the Kitalans. Uh, uh, I, I will go through some of this kind of trivial stuff. Of course, it's not trivial. It's certainly not trivial to my patients uh, when I tell them that your patient, your blood pressure is normal, uh, which means normal Swedish blood pressure. But if you want to have a real low, good blood pressure, you need to uh, go paleo. Uh, so I'll skip some of these slides because they just uh, show some details about, uh, uh, and this one too. It's better we have time at the end for uh, questions. So. Uh, when a uh, traditional population migrates or becomes urbanized, the whole population uh, increases its blood pressure or blood sugar. So 100% after migration have a higher blood pressure than they would have if they had not uh, transitioned into a Western lifestyle. I was asked by the European Heart Journal a couple of years ago to comment on the fact that when you measure um, serum lipids uh, and uh, or uh, blood pressure in a random Norwegian population, you find that after the age of 60, 65, virtually everyone needs uh, medication. Uh, so most people feel we have a problem here. And the problem is not that uh, the, the, the studies are misinterpreted. I think uh, you gain something most people, if you take these medicines, but uh, of course we have a problem. Uh, why in the first place did we put ourselves in this position uh, throughout uh, decades of unhealthy uh, lifestyle? And this uh, chart actually is a so-called low-risk uh, uh, Mediterranean population. So the Norwegians are... Uh, worse off, but uh, not very much worse than the, the so-called low-risk populations. Uh, you should remember that atherosclerosis, uh, I don't know, is there a popular term or do, does everyone understand atherosclerosis? Uh, like hardening, fattening of the arteries, which is the basis of, of cardiovascular disease in many, many cases. Uh, this is um, a process that uh, affects virtually everyone. So the, this 40-year-old uh, uh, US woman has a normal coronary angiography, uh, but when you study her with ultrasound, you see that there is a thickening of the artery. There is compensatory enlargement of the artery so that uh, blood flow remains normal, uh, but um, uh, the process is going on, and uh, if you in uh, in autopsy studies uh, up to age 40, you see that most uh, people who die in car accidents or whatever have fairly advanced uh, atherosclerosis. So this is a, if you like, normal uh, process. But uh, in uh, South Africa uh, in the 1950s, uh, it was noted in autopsy studies that um, uh, black people, black males, middle-aged men uh, in Durban, South Africa, 76% of them had no or virtually no uh, atherosclerosis of the coronary artery of the heart, uh, versus 9% of white uh, men in New Orleans. Uh, and it's not genetic because blacks in the US, for example, have uh, just the same amount. So this is something with uh, the modern lifestyle. In animal experiments and animal observations, it seems pretty clear that uh, you cannot get atherosclerosis uh, in animals without 
uh, a wrong diet. So diet is the outstanding uh, cause of atherosclerosis in animal experiments and the, the, uh, virtually the only way to get regression to, to have it uh, go back. Uh, and yes, uh, uh, it's not only about fat. Uh, there are also uh, bioactive substances uh, that are, seem to be important, and the impact of cereal grains is uncertain. Uh, uh, I hope uh, some of you will be able to, to uh, listen to Lauren Cordain talking about atherosclerosis, uh, because he, uh, he knows a lot, uh, well, he knows a lot about everything, but uh, especially uh, this and autoimmunity and some other diseases. So, a low-risk Westerner uh, is not the same as a non-Westerner. And this physician uh, says that your blood pressure is normal and the patient doesn't ask anymore. So, but sometimes they do ask and my experience is that they are very interested to discuss uh, where do we come from, what did we eat uh, and so forth. Uh, and also the, the physician tells this patient uh, to lose 20 kilos and then please come back and tell me how on earth you succeeded. <laughs> Uh, it's not because of, of lack of elderly that these people don't have Western disease. There are enough elderly. Uh, this woman is 94, this man is 100 years old. We, uh, our, our age estimates were based on historic events. Uh, so in 1912, uh, a man from uh, Australia came and settled in Kitava. This is his gravestone uh, in Kitava. He stayed there until his death. Uh, this is a Japanese sea wreck. Uh, so we have some historic events we, which we could relate uh, to. Uh, we are pretty uh, safe uh, with our age estimates. Um, and it's not from genetic reasons. Uh, this is a uh, uh, Trovi and Ireland is now living as a uh, westernized uh, uh, businessman in uh, the mainland. And he was the only one with a blood pressure above 90, the diastolic blood pressure, the only one who was larger around his waist than around his uh, hips, uh, and so forth. Actually, they are uh, more vulnerable. Europeans, Anglo-Saxons, and uh, others are slightly less uh, vulnerable when the, uh, we eat a Western diet. Uh, 75% are smokers. Smoking in different uh, studies suggests that uh, uh, this comes on top of atherosclerosis and other things. Um, uh, energy expenditure is uh, high, but not extreme. Uh, uh, so an average construction worker in uh, Sweden would have about the same uh, level of physical activity, but on re retirement day he looks very, very different uh, in every uh, aspect. Their saturated fat intake is high from coconut. Uh, their, oh, sorry, their total fat intake is low, but I don't make a big uh, point of this. I don't think you need to eat a low-fat diet. I think you need to stay away from Western food. Uh, so 65 to 70 percent of their energy comes from carbohydrate, uh, starch, mainly starch, which as you probably know is uh, the main uh, villain for glucose uh, intolerant uh, people. As long as they are glucose intolerant, our studies suggest that uh, you can improve your glucose tolerance uh, immensely by reverting to a paleo diet. I skip some of these uh, slides now. Uh, humans have a high capacity to, to digest uh, starch. We, we have a high capacity of salivary amylase, suggesting that uh, we are still uh, descendants of starch-eating uh, ancestors. I don't say we need it, but I say we can cope with it. Uh, 
So carbohydrate and fat, both to the left and to the right, but very different uh, types of food. I think we should talk about food instead of macronutrients and things like that. And when we talk about uh, the big villains, I think we need to hear much more about bioactive substances in food. So far for, treat for um, prevention uh, and now treatment of disease, uh, uh, there are very few studies. Uh, you will hear Linda Frasetto later. Uh, she and we and a few others are uh, those who have done the few randomized control trials. You could say that the critics are, are right when they say there is too little data. Well, yes, uh, I tend to agree. There are small trials, there are not long-term trials and so on, but uh, it's, it's a start. And uh, um, we found that uh, in patients with early diabetes, or some of them had only impaired glucose tolerance, that's uh, pre-diabetes, uh, all of them reverted to normal glucose values on a paleo diet. And in another study, we, a study we found that uh, in patients with more uh, long-standing type 2 diabetes, uh, uh, paleolithic diet was uh, more beneficial than uh, what we normally tell our patients to eat. Um, and then Linda Frasetto's uh, group has shown that uh, healthy um, uh, subjects lower their low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, the, the bad cholesterol, triglycerides, uh, and fasting insulin very much. And the area under the insulin curve when you drink uh, glucose solution by uh, a very high figure also. So uh, all these findings are very promising. I think I skip uh, these slides. Uh, this is what I just said about our study. So uh, in addition to that, we have many promising case reports. Uh, I look forward to uh, meet Ben Bolzer. There might be uh, many others I have not uh, met so far uh, who can uh, tell about their experience as physicians. I think we should start uh, collecting data uh, not only about the, the success stories but also about the failures because there are a couple of failures where I don't quite understand uh, how to proceed. But on the whole, it's a very successful uh, clinical experience uh, that I have uh, so far. Uh, there are no obvious risks. Uh, Pedro Bastos will tell you more about milk uh, uh, later today. It's uh, surprising how, how uh, uncertain the effects uh, for, for bone strength uh, are uh, that has been propagated for so many years now. Because there's money in it and other issues as well. Uh, iodine uh, is an interesting story. Uh, uh, the, I, th I think the requirements of iodine, uh, as we see it, as, as it is uh, proposed, uh, uh, it's not wrong, but it, it, it's hard to see how could our ancestors... Uh, maybe... Uh, um, I think... Uh, we can perhaps come back to that uh, later, but uh, I think this is uh, one of the issues we need to discuss more within the community, because if they were not eating a lots amounts of uh, shellfish uh, and uh, marine fish on a daily basis, uh, they would have problems unless they knew that they need to, to uh, take the thyroid of animals and uh, split it in the group. Uh, or thyroid requirements during the Paleolithic were lower, it could be that today uh, they are increased due to uh, uh, substances in food that interfere with our thyroid uh, system. It could be sustainable uh, if you eat more root vegetables, uh, if uh, we find out that uh, uh, root vegetables are healthy, then uh, then uh, it's 
perhaps more easy for our sustainability and more local production, no fertilizers. Uh, soon we are out of phosphate and what happens then? There are many issues that uh, are problematic. Uh, no dairy is more sustainable than da uh, with dairy. And sustainable meats, eating organ meats, uh, and you get involuntary calorie restriction in our experience and in our studies. Uh, if you eat as much as you like, but you just pick paleo food, you get automatic calorie restriction. So if, if we eat less, uh, it's more food for the planet. Everyone agrees this is unhealthy. Everyone agrees this is healthy. The funny thing with this slide is that uh, it's very different uh, uh, belief systems connected to each of uh, the pictures. Uh, so if you ask someone, uh, what, what do you believe in? Well, I believe in the DASH diet. Uh, no, uh, yeah, it's this one. Um, the dietary approaches to stop hypertension uh, diet. But when you look at what is on the plate, you see that, well, more or less paleo. So common foods may cause common health problems, and food choice may be more important than to count fat, to count carbohydrate or calorie. Nearly all of us get atherosclerosis, and we, we don't know why. I think nutritionism uh, has been uh, too much on the agenda. Uh, this is a term from, um, what's his name, Scri uh, Scrigini, or something like that, picked up by Michael Pollan. Thank you. You mentioned that reversals uh, can be made in blood glucose, etc., by going uh, grain and dairy free. Do you find uh, that atherosclerosis can be reversed? Well, in animal trials, uh, it has been shown that it can be reversed. In humans, uh, uh, the few studies that have been made uh, were with, uh, well, either extremely low fat diets. Uh, suggesting that fat can have something to do with it uh, in some cases, but um, they, we know too little. Uh, there are too few studies, but certainly the animal experiments uh, show that it can be reversed. Yes, even calcified plaques can be re resolved, uh, so uh, the option it, it seems to be there. I wonder if you could comment on somebody who's pre-diabetic and the use of a lot of fruit in his diet. Do you, would you recommend that they continue to eat a lot of fruit? Um, do you look at certain fruits having more uh, fructose in them? Do you, do you take that into account? Uh, I suggest you follow your patients. Uh, in my experience, uh, uh, they can eat a lot of fruit. Uh, in, in the study, in the first study I mentioned, uh, they uh, were eating, uh, I think, half a kilo of fruit. Uh, a day, since there's much water in it, it's not uh, as much as it seems, but um, in another study we made in more long-standing diabetes that uh, we did not publish, uh, uh, it was kind of pilot study many years ago, uh, they were eating six fruits uh, a day and uh, nothing untoward happened. Uh, uh, I think uh, the main issue is to, uh, to get the patients to become more glucose tolerant, uh, meaning they can uh, handle fruit better, and I think paleo diet is uh, better than any solution I'm aware of. Uh, could you tell us about the meal frequency of the Catawans? Uh How many meals a day did they eat? Uh, well, they eat uh, pretty often. They, they have uh, three big meals uh, a day, and in between that uh, they uh, eat when they are um, well, hungry or they want to eat, uh, so they take a fruit or 
they take these uh, young coconuts uh, from the trees. Uh, either they climb up themselves. Uh, uh, one 70 year old man, he, uh, he uh, died when he fell from the coconut tree. But uh, uh, that's the side story. But um, uh, uh, they. They eat uh, fairly frequent. Uh, nevertheless, I think intermittent fasting is uh, an interesting option. I'm glad you mentioned it. Uh, so, uh, uh, what would be your point uh, in this area? Uh, why did you ask? I, I, I'm trying to understand how uh, we can eat so many carbs and get away with it. Whereas most other tribes, I think that eat a lot of carbs only once a day because it's so hard to prepare. Yeah, no, they, they eat, uh, they, they boil their food, uh, their, their um, tubers, uh, um, so it's, uh, it's a lot of carbohydrate from, uh, from morning to, to daylight, to, uh, to dawn. I have a question myself, uh, following exactly up on what uh, Jake was asking about, uh, and it's the idea, the question, uh, you hear it about um, uh, people's metabolism being geared towards uh, burning fats and ketones uh, versus burning sugars, uh, glucose. And if, there are, if the Catavans, for example, are eating a high carb diet, the amount of carbs that are used to um, burn in the, in the short term, post uh, pandial, as well as what's stored in muscle glycogen, liver glycogen, to the extent that there must be others left over, is that turned into fatty acids that have been stored and then released between meals uh, during longer terms? In which case it would be, even though it's a high starch diet, it somewhat becomes also a little bit more of a high fat diet? Is that a possible uh, hypothesis? Yeah, certainly, yes. I, I don't know so much about those details, so uh, but it certainly is, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, thanks. Well, uh, if there are no more questions, then why don't we put our hands together again? For